Rock a bye, baby. I A G air oil separator. Go to sleep, baby. I A G air oil separator. We're back up in the Netflix garage. We're gonna be installing an I A G air oil separator street series. Hell yeah! Look at all these hoses. I got hose galore. We got fitting galore. We got zap strap galore. And uh, stay tuned. So if you're just starting this air oil separator install, I'm gonna call it a catch can just cause it's quicker to say. You're gonna wanna remove your intercooler first just cause you got a lot of hoses going back there and your intercooler's gonna cover that. And uh, you might actually have to remove your throttle body. Uh, we're not gonna be removing our throttle body and showing you how you can do it without removing your throttle body for the street series, competition series. You'll need to remove your throttle body cause you gotta plug in a hole in there. Uh, where we just reuse the nipple. The nipple. I would say for the time that it takes to remove your air box and your battery, you're gonna to wanna to remove your negative anyways. It's gonna make it a lot easier to access the valve cover breather ports. Uh, just, I can get my hand right down in there now and you'd be hard to see what you're doing with everything in place. Okay, so as you can see down in here, your PCV valve, we've already installed it with the hose that they do supply. You can just plug this Y into the existing uh, drain tube, they call it. But uh, anyways, this is how it's sitting right now. So this is how tight you have the hose that goes to the bottom of your intake manifold underneath your throttle body. It kind of squeezes right through there. And that's all in underneath your inner cooler where you can access it. You're gonna need to remove your coolant hose that goes to your turbo right here. It's just a little uh, fitting that goes right in like that. It's got a couple clamps on it, squeeze clamps. So you remove that. And then, like I said before, there's a, on your factory air box, you're gonna have a blow-by sensor that comes out the top of it here. And it goes down into your PCV valve. And then this nipple on the factory one goes over to the bottom of the intake. So now it's gonna have the hose that comes from the intake this way. We're gonna have another one coming from our catch can to the Y here. And then we also have one coming from the catch can that goes to the top of this fitting. And then you'll have a, one coming from the catch can that goes to your blow by uh, on, we don't have a blow by, so we're gonna have to work around that. You're gonna have one going down to your left side valve cover breather hose. And then you're gonna also have a hose coming to your right side valve cover breather hose. Pretty straightforward on the coolant side of things. You're gonna have a hose coming from the top of the catch can to the top of your fill tank and then from the bottom of your catch can to the turbo hose there. That's all, those are the hoses you're gonna have installed for the street series. The competition series doesn't have a couple of those hoses and you just end up plugging off the blow by and the, well, and this and hose, whatever that is, we'll find out in a bit. That's just a little pinch clamp. So the breather hose is held on with that little pinch clamp. So just slide that out of the way. You might need to get a tool in here to help you pull this off, but let's just see. Wiggle it and pull it, break your windshield. Okay, so it's the same exact same hose on the passenger side and it just has a pinch clamp right in here. Just gonna take that up off. And then we're just gonna wiggle and pull this baby. She needs a little extra leverage or help. Holy crap on a cracker. cherry nectar so both breather hoses that come right off of your valve covers go directly to the air oil separator and because we have this out right now we're just going to do a couple of the steps for the air oil separator install they give you a replaceable drain hose they call it they say you can reuse this one or you can use a new one and we're just going to be installing a, a y connection off of there Field. 
Oh! This is what's gonna go in there instead out of your PCV nipple. Uh, this is the old one that was in there and you can tell it's a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna cut this one so it's the same size. So I have clearance underneath my turbo outlet. I'm gonna use some hose cutters for this job. Get a precise cut right like that. Who would have said that you shouldn't buy some hose cutters? Okay, so I'm just gonna install the large side of this T. <sighs> Onto there. We might need to go further down, but we'll bottom out this one first on the engine. And the, all these fittings are zap strap clamps they recommend or supply you with. So I'm just gonna get them on so I can still orientate them where I need to, but it's easier to just have them in place when I install it. I'm gonna cut these fairly short just so they don't get cut on it, snagged on anything. I can still tighten them like this, hopefully. We need to go further. Ah. Okay, I'm just gonna tighten the zap straps. And then I'm just gonna let it flush. Can't cut myself on any of those, like I can get my hand in there anyways. The Street Series catch can requires you to install this hose in the bottom of the intake manifold, whereas the Competition Series has a plug that goes in that hole. So right now we're actually at a stage where we're gonna be installing the catch can in place and we're gonna have to have the coolant hoses attached to the catch, catch can before we install it. Uh, it's just really tight in there. Uh, so we've undone our bulkhead connector for our entire engine harness. And we're just gonna get that out of the way. For now, it's gonna be relocated to this bracket here. Cause the catch can, normally this harness sits here, but we've already removed that bracket. And that's where the catch can lives. So this is just gonna come out of the way for now. And we're going to, install that catch can in place. So these are the two factory bolts that held a bracket on, which held your wiring harness on. So this is where the catch can mount goes. First, we're gonna bend these brake lines up and out of the way a little bit so that uh, the catch can can fit in there. Okay, so I'm just gonna use a rag here to just prevent me from scarring up the paint. Uh, and we're gonna just pry up on these one line at a time. And we kinda just want it to come up, you know, like uh, three quarters of an inch or so. You know what, maybe I can just pull on that. Okay, so those aren't touching anything and they're a lot higher. Nothing's been kinked. Uh, it's actually kind of straightened out some of those bends a little bit and they're not rubbing on each other. So I think we're probably good there. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and install our coolant hoses onto our catch can before we install the catch can. I think this did come pre-lubed, but it got all dirty and stuff while we were doing all of our other jobs. So I'm just gonna pull these O-rings off, clean this up and put some fresh lubricant on these. 
both these coolant hoses are the exact same part, exact same piece, exact same length. Uh, so you just need to uh, cut them after everything's installed to whatever length you prefer. These don't need any sealant as they have an O-ring on them. Okay, so I've already installed this nipple. We had removed it from the hose just so we didn't have a hose in our way and it can be stalled on our intake while we had more stuff apart. So now we're just gonna go ahead and thread the coolant hose into the catch can. The coolant hose fitting is a 7 8 or 22 millimeter. I'm not gonna be able to tighten these later, so you're gonna need to get them. Maybe that's why they wanted to tell you to install that piece. But oh, spaghetti! -o. Okay, so you can't really tighten this hose on because of the spacing. Uh, in the installation instructions, it does tell you that you need to install this top piece. Um, it has already been installed for us, but looks like we're gonna have to remove it. Three millimeter Allen screws. Okay, I think there's just a couple O-rings down there. One, the dry one, so it's a good thing we're pulling this off. Okay, so you see there's an O-ring that holds this. It's almost like a square cut seal almost. I'm gonna put some lubricant on that since it's dry. And then that just lives in here. So this is the top of your air portion of your catch can. With that uh, fitting or whatever you wanna call it off, now we can at least have the space to be able to tighten this top hose. Oh man, I like tight things. So we got these hoses on. Looks like a, I don't know what it looks like. A handbag. It's a purse. This is my, uh, my respirator. Nose only. Hello. We're just gonna put some lubricant on this piece. Can't remember what they call it. There is a name for it. And it's got all million holes here, so uh, hopefully we remembered the orientation. But they do tell you in the installation instructions, the orientation that they want this installed. Where I believe that's where it was. So now that we have our nipple on up here and our two coolant hoses on, we can go ahead and install this in the vehicle now. Okay, they give you a lot of options on how high or how low you want this mounted inside the vehicle. According to the installation instructions, they want it installed the bottom hole, the fourth one up like that. And with the angle going downwards, I guess maybe if you have different hoods or something, you can, it's a five millimeter Allen head. Voila, so in one bag they had three bolt, the three Allen head bolts with your two hose clamps we're gonna need and the relocating mounting bracket for the wiring harness. And in another bag, they had the mounting bracket with two new bolts to mount it to the uh, fender well. Okay, so here we go, baby. Let's see how, how she fits in here. Uh, I'm gonna wanna just maybe hammer this down here for now or get it out of my way. Deal with that in a minute. And then this hose is gonna go in here. And we're just gonna use those two like that. That looks effing fresh. Too good to be true. So the plastic cowling here, you either wanna have to trim this or we can adjust where we put that bracket because we are we can't quite get the hole on unless we wanna push up on this a lot and uh, we'd rather it not rub on there. So we're gonna just attempt to put it, the bracket down one hole. We're starting to get used to doing things twice. Once we start hitting three times is when I'll start, I start going crazy, but. So, okay, we're just gonna go down. They recommended here. As you saw, we didn't have enough clearance so we're just gonna pop it down one slot. Dax was raised in a household where he is smarter than me. Go to the lowest possible hole. Ooh, come on back. 
Come on a little bit. There we go. Okay, so we're just test fitting some of these hoses already. And it looks like the lower hose is good to go for the size it is. For the length, I should say. Upper hose might be, but we're probably gonna wait until the very end before we put that guy on. So now that we have the catch can mounted, we're gonna relocate the engine harness connector. So let's show you how to do that. I did, I'm not sure. Just a very small amount. Around there, if there's any left on my fingers, I'll pull apart easier next time. So we're just gonna put her in and push while you're Clamping that baby down. Gonna rub a little bit. Maybe we'll just zap strap that so they don't move separately. And now we can just tighten down that. We're gonna leave it loose for now, just so we can, uh, once we get all the hoses in, because we need to come in tight areas, we'll tighten that bracket down after. This is our O2 sensor for our right bank. Okay, next is, uh, more hoses. Okay, they have a certain procedure online on how to, which steps to take. Out of the crankcase, there's the, the little piece that we put in already. So there's this piece going to your crankcase. Uh, we, this is the OEM one. We installed uh, the supplied one. And then instead of this T fitting, you install the Y fitting. Now off of that Y fitting, they've already pre-assembled this piece for us but we actually need it to be a 90. So they also supply you with a 90. So we're just gonna cut this zap strap, put this 90 on, and then go ahead and stick this onto the, that's in line with the drain tube. These fresh barb fittings are just a nightmare. Barbara Streisand. Daddy no like, daddy no like. I'm putting this, we're never gonna need this, so I'm just gonna make myself a little less angry. Maybe, maybe I'll get even more angry. Don't worry about pulling the pre-assembled piece off. They give you plenty of 5 8 hose for what you need. So we're just gonna cut one, like probably a half an inch longer than this, just for a little bit more clearance because we did cut the lower one about the same size that went to the crankcase, so it is quite low. Um, so we'll just cut it a little bigger than that and then So we just made it that much bigger. So now we can install the 5 8 inner diameter. I don't even know if that's 5 8 but on to the one we just cut. Oh, holy Mother Teresa. Holy, how do they want you to put these on? That is a question that I do not know. I'm still not quite there. So this tie wrap is gonna save the day because this thing could fall apart really easy. Not. We're just gonna put this off to the side where it's not gonna interfere with that hose. She's not going nowhere now, baby. Okay, so now we're just gonna go and put this on the Y. So as you can see, this is where we've installed the Y fitting underneath the turbo outlet. And we're just gonna take this piece we've put together and it's gonna go right on top and sit above turbo pipe. All right, that one went on pretty easy. We're not gonna put that zap strap on until we get this bottom hose on the, the, the Y because I'm not sure how it should be rooted. I think we need to twist that. Okay, you take the long half inch hose, half inch hose, and it's gonna come all the way over to your driver's side breather, valve cutter breather. Zap 
Got it like that. Okay, so we just ran it between just underneath our fuel pressure regulator hose and above our fuel rail. It's supposed to go along your AC line, which we've removed. We don't have the shield, the fuel injector shield on here anymore, which might make it a little tighter, but. Um, okay, so Dax wants to do a intercooler front mount eventually one day. So we ran the hose up and behind the brake booster. So everything can all be there eventually. Uh, that way we didn't cut it too short and have to rerun a longer hose. So I'm just gonna cut this hose right now to the length that we need. It goes to the middle one of these three. So it looks like probably just cut it on it down at injection. Cut it right there. And we're just gonna push her on. Like that. Okay, so we're going to be doing the right bank valve cover breather. Not sure how we want to do this, but she lives right down in here. A lot easier without those fuel rail shields. Push that on all the way. So we just kind of went under there. It's gonna need to go to the top one of the three. I guess that's kind of how it's gonna have to be. We cut that shorter. It's just gonna make the tighter of a curve there. Push that guy on. So what left, we also got a nipple down on the bottom here. It's way down here. The lower one will go to the lower Y off of underneath the turbo there. And the upper one's gonna go to the little bit higher one. It's five eighths. If you have an OEM turbo shield, there's actually a, uh, a hole they want you to run this through. Uh, we don't have that hole. So we're just gonna push her on to the Y fitting. If I can, holy mother Teresa. I think I gotta turn that so that it goes right like that. I tried to turn that before, but it's not the easiest thing in the world to twist. My hammies are tight. Oh. I don't know which way we're gonna like that more. So we just twisted that so it's, that's as best as it can be. And now we're just gonna have to get two zap straps on there while it's uh, somewhat accessible. She's looking good. Really tight on the bell housing. Slide the zap strap through there. Oh, there we go. I don't really want to get that straight somehow. Very hard to tighten this one. I don't want to damage that. There we go. Oh yeah. Oh, there we go.
Just a heads up, the 5 8 elbow fitting is extremely tight, either both sides to get that hose on. Oh, she's real tight. I recommend using a little lubricant because it's, uh, in, yeah, it's very hard. So we have almost all our hoses run. We're just gonna put our coolant hoses on before we figure out where we wanna put this right bank hose. Um, so the coolant one, we've ran. We're just gonna cut this one a little bit because the best route would be like that. We're not rubbing on anything. If we try and push it on here, it's gonna be tweaking on some stuff. It's gonna take off about an inch. Pre-put the clamps on. Open this up, get it on all the way. Now we'll work clamp over. The clamps go on the coolant because they would leak without a clamp. Right like that. And so she's pretty free in there. She's barely touching the harness. Looks pretty good. We're probably not gonna keep it this long. We're just gonna try and figure out what Dax wants to do. So we'll just put that on there like that for now. Kind of ridiculous. Probably could just do a really short little like that. But we're just gonna figure that out right now with this hose. Oh, this is what it feels like after you install the catch can. Hyper extending your legs all day. Oh. Man, but she looks absolutely wonderful under here. Come take a look, guys. This is uh, how we've kind of zap strapped up all our hoses and the layout we've done. We didn't follow the instructions to a T because this Cobb Turbo Inlet has a delete for the blow-by sensor, is what they call it, connection. And I believe you're supposed to just plug this one off. But really, it's just a hose that was missing from above at the top in there. If you can see that, but anyways, off of there. So anyways, we're for now, we're just gonna try and run. Instead of this hose goes to this port is what we did. Instead of it coming off of right before the tur turbo inlet and going to that port, we just went to this hose. Seems like it kind of makes sense. They're both vacuum area before the turbo. So hopefully we don't have to plug anything off, but this is what we're gonna do for now. Our hose coming off of that PCV drain tube with the Y and the hose coming off of the, uh, Bottom of the intake manifold, it's all together here. And then we ran this one along the firewall and came down around to the breather tube off the valve cover. Same with this guy, runs off the breather tube on the passenger side. And then just our coolant upper and lower hose right here. So all that we gotta do now is install the intercooler, put everything back together that we took apart there to wrap up everything. But we have a couple modifications that are necessary for our intercooler to mount more solid because we did the TGV deletes, which we weren't able to mount these uh, fuel rail protector shields, which in turn actually have your mount for your intercooler incorporated. So we're gonna try and modify this Okay, so if you got this far, thanks for watching and following along with this video. This was episode six of our series one with this STI build. That rounds up the end of our air oil separator installation, the IAG Street Series model. In the next episode, we'll be showing you how to tee into your coolant line and it's the cylinder four cooling kit we'll be installing. Subscribe, comment, like, dislike. Let us know if you thought there was something that we didn't do that you would like us to done instead or if there's something else that you'd like us to show you. Yeah, so hopefully you really liked how we did things here and uh, how we routed everything and, and continue to watch more work like that as we do more modifications. And if you guys know better quality, let us know in the comments and we will try and do our best to follow along. Thank you.